<coughs> hey everybody, it is Jason, and yesterday was my five months on T points timeline thing. Basically, yes, I, I am now five months on T. And, um, yeah, as I explained on my last video, it, it's been a bit mental in terms of planning for the convention, so I did film, like, my three months and four months, but I just didn't get around to editing. Uh, so I'm going to have to kind of compress it all into into this video. That's going to be fun. Um, but, yeah, it basically, um, it's, be, it's been an interesting few months. Um, the reason being that... Um, in, in terms of what changes have happened, obviously there are some that I've talked about a lot and there are some that I've expected to happen by now, but they haven't really. Um, it's been um, different to what I thought it would be. Um, if, if for those of you who don't know, when you, when you kind of go through the process, um, you're given a sheet of, okay, this should happen around this time and whatever. Um, but yeah, every, everybody is different. And, um, also, one thing about, um, with my stuff, I've just noticed that the camera's really wonky. Oh well, sorry. Yeah, another aspect for those of you who don't know, because I honestly can't remember if I said it in the previous video, I don't think I would have known at that point. Um, when I had my blood tests uh, before my fourth shot, um, basically it came out that my T levels were too low. And, um... In a way, I've kind of got to look on the bright side because, firstly, um, I'm going to be going to see uh, Dr. Seal in January, so he'll be able to sort something out. Um, whether it is just because I need to take the tea more frequently, or it's because the tea is converting into estrogen for some reason, I'm sure he'll be able to sort that out. Um, but also, I need to look on the bright side of, okay at least my T-levels are too low as opposed to too high, because if they were too high, it would be um, a lot more difficult, I think. And sometimes if your T-levels are, are so high, you, you have to be taken off it. Um, and obviously I don't want that. So there is that. But also I was thinking earlier today that in terms of my voice, for example, my original plan was to kind of go on a lower dosage of tea. That way my voice would kind of ease into it more. But because my tea levels are low anyway, I think that has contributed to my voice overall having quite a smooth journey so far um, in, in terms of what's going on with it. So why don't we talk about the voice for the minute and I'm going to run a, a voice comparison of all five months for you. My name is Jason and I have just started testosterone. My name is Jason and I am one month on testosterone. My name is Jason and I am two months on testosterone. My name is Jason and I am three months on testosterone. My name is Jason and I am four months on testosterone. My name is Jason and I am five months on testosterone. So maybe from three months to five months, uh, there hasn't been that much of a change in pitch. Although having said that, the three, three to four, there was definitely a, a drop. But, um, yeah, three months overall, actually, was not that eventful. Um, but having said that, a couple of things in, in terms of my voice, which is really cool, is that, um, and I'll put, like, um, I'll put the, the chart thing, which I've used. So this is, this is from yesterday, so you'll see the graph. As you can see, there's been, like, a quite a big uh, sort of drop over time. And from, like, sort of four to five months, um, three and a half to five months, it's kind of been going all over the place a bit in terms of where my voice is, is sitting. Um, to be fair, considering about how much my pitch has dropped, it's not going around that much. It just looks quite dramatic because it's all pointy and stuff. Um, but one thing I've noticed is that my voice has kind of settled a little bit, so I can do more with it than I could. Uh, my voice is doing the uh thing less than it was, although I do still do it the odd time. Um, and it is very slowly still getting lower, so I can now get um, G2s quite comfortably now. Um, but um, with, with, with everything else, like, it, I can kind of... It, it, there's two things, really. Firstly, I'm way less dysphoric, obviously, about my voice, so I am more comfortable about using more of my range again, whereas before I was kind of just speaking in quite a 
quite a you know a small range um, but also because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to practice when I can and, and stuff I'm finding like this morning um, it's it's really bizarre but there's a there's a bit in my range when I was pre-tea that I had to spend years and years and years perfecting and strengthening and and getting right um, which was kind of um, Middle C-ish, maybe higher than a middle C. Okay, so an E above middle C up to like an E above that. That kind of octave there was always a bit weird and I had to spend a lot of time getting it really good. And then when I went on T, it kind of got weak again. So I can sing there still, but it is weak and it's really hard to control. But then above that, again, it's, it's harder for me to control, but again, my my range, I can, I can still hit the notes. Um, maybe not the, 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 the absolute highest F6, which, um, uh, I don't really sing up there anyway, obviously, but, um, I tried an F6 and I could just about get it out, but everything else is still there. So I'm starting to wonder because maybe this gradual drop, maybe I will keep those notes in some form. And it would be really cool if when my voice kind of strengthens again that I could sort of sing more kind of power, like power metal type thing where it's sort of a high male voice. That'd be pretty cool. At the minute, it's a little bit frustrating because I've kind of got the range of a bass one at the minute. Um, so I can't get stupidly low notes, um, but I also can't get high notes either um, in a kind of a tenor range. But the problem is that my timbre is still very much of a, of a tenor. Um, on the phone, I'm I'm passing like all the time now, which is really good, and it's making my job so much easier. Um, but in person, um, I have had problems with passing still, even with my voice. I think just because I I do I do still sound a bit like I'm just a woman on with a bad cold or something. Although it is less now than it was um, four months ish, like in terms of how I sound, um, but. Like in terms of appearance, I'm not I'm not passing 100 percent. Yeah, well, I'm not passing nearly 100 um, percent. But yeah, but oh well. So yes, yeah, that's my that's my update on on voice. So things are going really nicely with that, and I'm really really happy with it and really comfortable with it. Um, I'm I'll be very interested to see what kind of develops with Tambra as we get on to excuse me, sort of um, you know a year in that kind of thing and. Um, if, say, I do go on to um, a more frequent dosage, like sometimes they do sort of three weeks or sometimes even two weeks, um, it will be interesting to see what happens to it, um, again, in terms of, of, of timbre. Um, so that would be really cool. Um, on, to, on to next stuff, um, why don't we talk about hair, since that's always a thing, isn't it, when I talk about this. So um, basically the hairline is, is not really being very eventful. Having said that, this new hairstyle... Um, is really helping in terms of uh, passing. Um, although actually the hairstyles I've had overall, because I keep it away from my fringe, be, you know, like I, I keep away, keep away from here because I just hate my hair being in my face. Um, it does make me look like my brow is quite sort of high. Uh, there, there is a corner kind of forming here, but it's been doing that for a while, so it hasn't really receded since then. Um, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, I've said before that my family, my family's hairlines don't recede that much anyway, and I think in that instance I'm quite lucky because I'm I highly doubt I'm going to be going bald anytime soon, or if I do, it might come back a bit. But yeah, um, but yeah, in terms of everywhere else, so um, uh, yeah, I've been getting more hair sort of sprouting. Um, my forearms are now quite sort of dark. Um, they kind of look kind of. Scraggling, I don't know if they're going to stay like that or if they're going to get thicker, I don't know. Um, armpit has gotten a bit darker, um, stomach has filled out a bit more. Um, kind of everywhere else what's happening is either I'm getting like one or two really big long standalone hairs, like I've got a few sort of patches on my shoulders which is really bizarre, or it's kind of coming through really slowly and it's fluffy and then eventually it turns into sort of fully fledged hair. So for example, I'm... I'm sort of around here, in my, in my stomach area, um, basically I can see all this sort of fluff coming through, 
Um, and it's really hard to see when when you're like looking at it in a picture, except when I'm looking down at it, because I can see it and it's looking really cool. So eventually my stomach is going to be quite fully fledged and hairy. In terms of my face, um, I thought for lols i just let this grow out in Movember um, for no particular reason. Um, it's, it's still very, very fluffy, but the hairs are darker. Uh, so it is pretty pathetic and you probably can't see very much and I'm going to shave it off anyway. But um, there's more hairs growing through and sort of here, um, which is good. Nothing really in this middle bit there, but then I don't think it does for a lot of people. Round here, um, so I'm getting sort of more patches like here and here of sort of much more smaller, denser patches of hair, um, rather than kind of these big, long, not big, long, but like big and thick hair that's kind of been coming through for, for years, but there's more of it now. Um, but annoyingly, um, at the moment, because there's sort of the odd one or two coming through in random places, I keep missing hairs when I shave. Um, so for example, there's a few on this corner here, which like, is really hard to get. And, um, I just noticed a few minutes ago, I've got a hair literally there, and I don't know why. Like, it's not been there before, so it's obviously come through quite recently, so with that. Oh yeah, and, um... I've noticed some fluff coming on my hands on these parts here, so uh, that's um, that's probably again gonna go there. And uh, also on my fingers, um, there's a little bit coming through on my fingers. Um, whether it'll stay blonde or not, I don't know, because again, blonde hair. But then my family are mostly brunettes, so I don't know. Um, on my feet, they're looking um, a little bit hobbity. Um, I'm, I've got hair on my feet now, like proper sort of a line going on. Um, but yeah, everything else, like, le legs are, legs are very nice, uh, calves are just my, my thing that I show off, because they've always been really awesome and hairy, and then thighs have filled out some more, um, but nothing specifically eventful in the past month or, or so, but they look a lot better now, because I wasn't really that happy with the, the thigh hair that I had pre T. it was very kind of, it was kind of hard to see it, or it was very kind of uh, sporadic, um, whereas now it's kind of come through a lot more and it looks more normal, you know, in that kind of way, so that's good. Yeah, so uh, next, why don't we move on to fat redistribution. So, um, with fat redistribution, I think it slowed down a little bit recently, um, but um, I think I think more fat has come off my face because I've definitely looked in the mirror recently and thought, yeah, I definitely have more of a of a jaw going on. Um, it's still not quite there as much as I'd like, but then also I'm a little bit overweight, so I'm, I'm gonna have a bit there. And I drink gallons of water as well, and I've still got this bit there, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I think um, my face has become much more square, like here, which is really good. And um, like I'm, I'm gonna put up the um, the pictures in a, in like a minute or so, like the comparison pictures. Um, I it's, it's kind of difficult, I find, to see changes in my face at the moment. Um, but if you look back to six, well, six months, I can think of six months, but it's not, five months ago, um, then actually there's, there's a lot of, of changes I can see. And in particular, it is this sort of absence of, of fat, um, you know, kind of in your cheeks and all that, it's not really there anymore. There's a bit, obviously, but um, there's not there's not loads. Um, I will I will put up the the comparison pictures now. Um, the the front ones are always quite difficult, especially as I have to censor my moves because you know society. Um, and in the first in the first picture, I'm I'm sticking out my belly because I wasn't quite ready. But there we go. But uh, you can see that um, the other thing, as well as fat redistribution, is muscle mass has definitely grown. Um, but I'll switch to the, the back picture now because that's the one that has the, the huge difference. Again, you can't really see much from sort of four months to five months, but you can see that not only is my fat redistributed a lot since I started tea, but also I've lost weight, which is really good. Um, I'm, I'm finally starting to like shift this weight, which which is really good and it is making me more confident, obviously. But you can see as well, I've got more muscle um, on my arms, um, sort of all over my arms, my triceps in particular. I'm really happy with how they're coming along. 
Um, then down towards the waist, you can see that I've got a really nice triangle coming along. Um, which, again, when I was pretty, I did have a little bit of that. Um, but it's really, really changed um, by going on tea. And then in terms of my muffin top, that has also started moving, again, because of the weight loss, I think. Um, but yeah, here are the, here are the uh, face pictures as well. Um, so yeah, you can you can see that I've definitely changed in, in my face with the, the face shape. And again, I'm using the, um, one day on tea to, to five months now. Um, and then on the side... You can't really see it, but I did check today. Um, my Adam's apple is slowly coming. Like it, there is a little tiny bit of of a of a lump um, that is showing in terms of of shape. If you feel it, you can definitely feel it's thicker. But um, there's that. I don't know actually now if my ears have grown or not. Um, it, I don't know. But um, you can see that the the corner of the the hairline as well as has gone back quite a lot. Maybe there are some more changes that you can see, I don't know. Um, obviously, if you're living with it every day, you can't always spot all the all the changes necessarily. Um, but, um, yeah, overall, I'm, I'm still very happy with, with what's going on. Um, and again, it'll be interesting to see what happens if and when my dosage is changed. I'm sure it is going to be changed because it's it's it seems a bit daft kind of keeping it at this when obviously my levels are too low for whatever reason yeah and then um mentally speaking i've been a bit all over the place but it's more to do with um the fact that i'm also taking um, progesterone still and uh basically i ran out because with the con i forgot to get some more and then i when i ordered some uh, lloyd's pharmacy were like Ooh, you're on this... Well, I'm assuming this is what they thought. You're on this testosterone, you can't possibly have it. Even though they said to me beforehand, Oh, yes, when you go on testosterone, let us know. Because I told them about it before, and there was whole confusion of, Oh, why is a mister ordering progesterone? And I explained, and they're like, Okay, but when you go on to testosterone, let us know. So, lo and behold, I let them know, and they're like, Nope, sorry, gatekeeping for you. So... I had to go to Superdrug in the end, and by this point, I was in a really bad way because, again, like my hormones were all over the place. Um, anxiety was through the roof. Um, and I basically just had to lie to them and say, actually, Superdrug, no, I, no I'm no, i not on any medication. No. Because, um, honestly, what's the point? Because basically my, my, my nurse told me to stay on progesterone um, when I went to her and talked about the low levels. So it's not like I'm I'm doing this, you know, I, this is just my choice. This is my nurse literally saying, no, 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 stay on it. Because, you know, with things like periods and whatever, you, you know, you've got to be... If, if you want to keep the periods off, then, you know, stay on it. Um, and it's like they... So basically my GP, my nurse knows that I'm on it. So therefore there's no benefit in me needing to tell online super drug, you know. Um, but in any case, uh, so... Now I'm now I'm fine as you can probably tell I've I've now I've now got my progesterone and, and now it's all, all leveled out, uh, which is which is good and I'm I'm doing sort of other things to keep my anxiety in check, um, and yeah so so overall it's it's okay but I think it's because of top surgery and and still waiting for that that every so often I just kind of have a low point like mentally um, and then you know it fuels my anxiety and stuff so I'm trying to do as much as I can to keep that in check but having said that I have my consultation today for top surgery so uh, I'll let you know obviously how that goes uh, but in the meantime I will see you in the next video bye bye